Hey everybody, this is Grant, your friendly neighborhood OpenShift team member. In this video, I'm just going to do a quick update on how to install the latest OpenShift Origin 3.7.1 onto CentOS. Um, so I'm going to start from scratch here. And you can see I am running the famous Microsoft Windows operating system, Windows 10. Pretty fancy stuff here. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. So I'm going to start with a VMware um, a virtual machine. And so I'm just going to create a new one here. So I'm going to say new virtual machine and apologize if this is hard to see. I can't actually increase the font size of VMware. And I am also doing this in real time. So let's see what we got going on here. Um, so I'm going to, yeah, sounds good. Uh, installer disk, I have CentOS Minimal. That's my installer disk that I'm going to use. So click on next there. I'm just going to call this uh, TechDope because that's the uh, name of the site I'm going to use. It's going to be stored on my E drive, which is a SSD. We're going to give this a single proc and maybe um, four cores. All right, click on next. Let's give this uh, 16 gigs of memory. I have 64 in this machine, so I'm just going to leave it at 16. Um, I'm going to use bridge networking so it gets its own IP address. Um, just click on some defaults here, create a new virtual disk, uh, 20 gigs, let's give it, you know, uh, let's give it 100 gigs, why not? Uh, click on next and next and let's customize the hardware real quick, just make sure everything's good, 16 gigs, 4 processors, the install ISO bridge networking all looks good. Click on finish, and uh, this should start it up here. Let me resize this window for you, and I'm going to click on install CentOS here. Let me put my mouse in here. Let's see. There we go. And this is a 4K display. Um, but I'm going to render it at 1080, so hopefully that will make a uh, difference. So you can see the font's a little bit bigger here, better. So let's press Enter key to begin installation. All right, we can do that. Maybe we can do that. It's probably creating the disk on the uh, underneath, which took a few seconds. So we are going to start from scratch. You know, I'm going to install CentOS and then I'm going to update it, and uh, we're going to do everything from from the basics, and we'll even set up DNS at the end. So I'm just going to use English English, and my installation source. It's going to fill that in in just a second. My installation destination. I'm going to put it on this hundred gig. Uh, drive here, and I'm going to configure the partitioning myself, and then I'm going to click on done, and then I'm going to create a uh, standard partition, and I'm going to create a boot. Uh, maybe I don't have to create a boot EFI on this one, so let's create a maybe a eight gig swap partition. So eight GIB, and then we're going to create a 92 gig root partition and we're going to click on done and accept changes and um, that's all there is to it so let's actually one more thing let's click on network and host name and turn the internet on <laughs> it, by default the um, NIT card is not enabled I don't know why that is but we want to enable that by default now we're going to click on and begin installation. We're going to set a root password here. And it's a weak password, but that's cool. Click done twice. We're going to create a user. G Shipley, make me an admin. Give it a password again. Another weak password. Click on done and done again. And it's almost done installing. Um, it's on package 230 right now. 245. So we'll give this a second here. I wonder if I can zoom this in. I don't know how in VMware. Maybe we could click one of these buttons. 
Enter full screen mode. Let's see what happens. Yeah, that didn't really help much, did it? Well, that's cool. All right. So it's doing the post installation test, and once this is finished installing, um, we'll just SSH in, and then you'll be able to see the screen a, a, a lot better. So we're still waiting on this. And then once this is done, um, I'll just click on I finished installing down here on the right hand uh, corner, and then we'll reboot the machine, and then we'll update it and uh, and go from there. Alrighty, it's almost done. Okay, it's done. So I can say I finished installing, then I'm going to click on reboot. And this will reboot the um, machine. Go ahead and start that up. And once it boots up, I'll open up a terminal and uh, we'll SSH in once we get the IP address. Okay, so it looks like we're all good. Let's go ahead and log in here. And I'll just get the IP address real quick. And it is 0 0.15. All right, so I'll bring this over. And uh, let's make the font size a little bit bigger here. And I don't know how to actually do that in this terminal emulator. So let's go to settings. And let's make the font like 30. That should be good for you. All right, so let's clear the screen. Now we want to SSH in, so it's uh, 192.168.0.15, and let me authenticate. Okay, so now I'm on this uh, fresh machine. The first thing I want to do is yum update to get all the um, latest updates since I downloaded this minimal version of CentOS, which has actually been quite a while ago. So we got 186 packages that needs to be updated and I have um, gigabit so it should go pretty fast here We're almost done with the download about halfway done alright it's uh, finished pulling everything down so now it's actually gonna install everything and then once it installs it's gonna clean up if you've used um, Linux before you know that this is the standard process, downloads, updates, and then cleans up at the end. It's got 418 packages left, or, or total to do, about 300 left. And what I generally like to do is, after I do an update like this, especially if it pulled a new kernel down, is I go ahead and reboot um, the system into, a, uh, into the new kernel. So we'll do that as well. Let's get some SE Linux policy. And again, if you're familiar with installing Linux and updating it and creating VMs, um, you may have fast forwarded through this part, which is completely fine. But I did just want to show a real time um, install. And I did see that it pulled down a new kernel. So I am going to update. Now it's cleaning up. Alrighty. Looks to be done. Should give us our command prompt back here in just a second. And then I'm actually going to reboot the machine. 
So let's, uh, I'll have this one available at the same time. So we can select that new kernel as well. Let's see, it's still doing something. I wonder if I uh, should have given it more. All right, so there we go. We're all good. Let's go ahead and shut down dash R now to reboot it. And that's going to sever my connection. And if we go over here, we should see um, a reboot happening. So I'm going to go ahead and select that um, new kernel in the VMware window. And that's going to boot it up. So I'll release the cursor and come back over to my uh, terminal here. Oops. And I am using Z shell on Windows, um, which is cool. All right, so now we're logged into the CentOS box. A few things I want to do. So I want to yum install git and uh, let's do Docker and let's do NetTools. So we'll pull all that down. And the reason I wanted to install git is I've created a repository that quite a few people out in the community has contributed to as well to really streamline the process of installing OpenShift Origin on CentOS. So I'm just going to walk you through um, how I install it, and I do install it quite frequently. So now we have Git, Docker, and NetTools installed, so I can do this config now. To get my IP address, instead of typing on IPADVR, that's just the way I've done it my whole life, so I like if config. All right, so let's go open my browser here, and let's go to github.com slash gshipling, and uh, we'll go here, and I'll click on my repositories, and I have this install CentOS repository um, that I updated 10 days ago to update to 371, and this is the video that I'm working on right now that's going to replace this link in there. Um, so what we want to do, I'm just going to clone this. That's just the way I like to work. You don't actually have to clone it. Um, but let's go ahead and do that. So I'm going to get clone. Oops, paste that link in. So now I'll have this install CentOS repo. And if we go back, we can see that we need to export our domain. So I'm going to copy that. Actually, let me make this a little bigger for you so you can see what I'm doing here. Um, so I'm going to export domain equals, okay? So let me paste that in, and my domain is techdope.io. That's the uh, domain I'm going to use. So let's go back and see what else we need to do. We need a username and a password. All right, we can do that. My username is going to be G Shipley, and my password is going to be uh, G Shipley, okay? So now we have these three things um, defined. And in this repo, there is a shell script. Install OpenShift SH. And you can see it takes reads for environment variables, domain, username, and version. And you can see that I default the version to 371, which is the latest version. If you want to run any previous version, you can just... Uh, put your own version tag in there. So I am going to uh, go ahead and run this install script. And I hate the Windows bell. So I'm just going to say install openshift.sh. Click on install. And that is going to run through, install all of the packages, and set up everything that I need. Um, and it's going to call the Ansible playbook under the covers. It's going to check it out. It's going to do all of that stuff from Git um, or clone it, not check it out. And at the end of about 20 minutes or so, um, I should have a freshly installed OpenShift Origin 371 um, install. And what's interesting about this is logging and metrics will be installed. And the way that's determined if you don't pass it in is if you assign more than 8 gigs of RAM or if more than 8 gigs of RAM is available on the machine it's installing to, um, it will install logging and metrics. Anything less than 8 gigs, um, it assumes that you uh, don't have enough resources for those two components on top of all the containers that you're going to 
um, be deploying. So I'm going to go ahead and let this run and uh, feel free to fast forward. I'll try to speed it up if I can and we'll see how long it took. So it's 1.37 p.m. today. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we are almost done. The install has completed, and now it's creating my user account. And now OpenShift is up and running, and it is 153. So that took about 16 minutes. Pretty sweet. All right. Um, so the next thing I want to do is add this to my router so that my host name works. You can see it added a ton of uh, interfaces here, but I know that my IP address is 0 0.15. So let's pop back over to our uh, browser. I'm going to log into my router here and uh, set up a port forward. And I'm going to um, delete the ones that I already have there. And I'm going to add a Tech dope entry here, and I want to forward port 8443 to 192.168.0.15.8443. Add that one. Um, I'm going to add one for port 80 as well. Same local IP address 80. Add that. And one last one for uh, 443. Oops. Dot fifteen and four four three. Click on apply, and uh, this will set up a port forwarding rule for my uh, router. So now, if we go to ifconfig.co, we can see that my external IP address is this one. So to set this up, you would go to your domain registrar. Uh, mine is Gandhi. So let me log in to Gandhi here and uh, make sure that this is set up correctly for our DNS records. So let me go to my domains and uh, we'll find techdope.io. Click on that one, look at the DNS records, and we can see that um, console.techdope.io is going to 7148.11.3, 7148.11.3. So what happens is when a user types in console.techdope.io in their browser, it's going to contact um, their DNS, and the DNS is going to return this IP address 7148.11.3, which is my external IP address that my ISP gives me. When they connect to port 8443 of this IP address, that's where that port forwarding on the router is going to come in. It's going to send those ports over to my OpenShift server. So let's try this out. Let's go to console.techdope8443, click on advanced, and let's log in here, G Shipley, and I believe I set the password as G Shipley as well. And boom, and there we have it, OpenShift Origin up and running. And this is the service catalog um, that you can 
use to deploy things from. So let's click on the question mark, click on about. We can see that this is running OpenShift Origin 371 and Kubernetes 176. So let's go ahead and uh, create a new project here and test this out. Grant project, click on create. So now we have a project, uh, error getting metrics. Okay, so let's accept the metric certificate. Done. Okay, so let's browse our catalog. Let's deploy a uh, little PHP app here. Select like PHP, click on next. I'm going to add this to grant project and get github.com slash gshipley simple php dot git oh dang it that should go here and the application name is just going to be called simple php and we're going to click on create we go to the project overview page we can see that my build failed so let's see I must have put in the uh, wrong repo so let's go ahead and change that we'll go to builds builds configuration um, and this is where you can see where the source repo is you can edit that so let's find the actual source repo that I want to use here let me just head over to github real quick go to um, repos here it is and of course it was the wrong one so let's paste that in and we're going to save this. This was actually good. Um, so you can see how to change a Git repo in your build. So let's go ahead and start a new build there. And we can see that that build is running now. We can look at the logs here. So it's cloning that repository and now it's going through the source to image process. So it's going to clone that repository and um, it's going to create a new container image on the fly with that source code in it and then push it to the internal registry and uh, the OpenShift registry. And so we can also look at the logs right here. It's pushing the layers in. Um, so all that's running now and it's deploying that image. So now my app is deployed and it created a route for me that's publicly available on the internet. Um, so let me click on that and we can see Welcome to OpenShift version 3.7.1. Um, so, pretty fancy stuff. So, we should also have metrics running here. So, it's going to load those metrics. Sure enough, uh, metrics was installed. So, that's awesome. Um, logs, we also have the archive logs or the logging stack that's installed by default once you accept the security certificate. So here is Kibana, and so we can look at all of the, the logs for that. So let's go back. So that's all there is to it to install OpenShift 371 uh, on a CentOS box. It's a pretty fast, straightforward process. And again, I would like to thank everyone who helped contribute um, to the install CentOS repository. We've been five people so far, and it is just a shell script. Um, that will go through and install everything for you, which is awesome. And it is using the Ansible playbook under the covers. All right, so that's it. I hope you enjoyed this video. See you later.